This could be a save the date photo. It could be. We could be killing two birds with one stone right now. This could be good. This could be good. <laughs> My earliest memory playing soccer was we had the school fields behind our house and so we would go out there after school and just kick around and make up games and have a bunch of fun. Our first memories are her playing recreation soccer right behind our house on Saturday mornings and, and that's where it all started. I was at soccer practice all the time and I just had the ball in my hand. I'm the type of person that when I put my mind to something, I need to be the best at it. And so when I was like, all right, I wanna be a, a goalkeeper and a really good goalkeeper, I just remember going out in the backyard, doing different drills or practicing on my own. She's just one of those people that was driven. Yeah. I don't think we did anything except support her. Yeah. She always wanted to go to practice. Yeah. But there was a passion at a very young age, and you could see that transcend through her local club team onto PDA. So at that U14 call up, we, we knew at that point she, she was on her way. You know, the youth national teams give these young players an insight into what they, their future may look like if they make the step to the women's team. I think beyond that, Casey's decisions in terms of the type of college she chose, Rutgers, and, and, and what she was able to achieve there. She achieved great things and final four appearances and things like that. And then her decision to go to France and take a chance and gamble on herself and her career, I mean, she just seems to have taken these steps forward at every junction. Three years into college and I got an email saying that, you know, there was an opportunity to play in France for a Champions League team and it was a really hard decision to go over and play overseas because I had the opportunity to play here in the States, but it was definitely a decision that ended up being great for my development and great for my overall growing up and maturity. And when, when she decided, you know, first reaction you think of as a parent, 20, 21 year old going to Europe. But then part of you is so proud and we were so happy that she was gonna take this step. I mean, what a great move it was for her. I was like, why not yeah. <laughs> go for it? It turned out to be an amazing decision. In fact, Casey went away playing 90 minutes per game, playing Champions League, playing some of the top players in the world. I think that was, that was the start of the biggest jump in her career. From France to Seattle and now here to Raleigh, North Carolina, it's been really cool to experience all different teams, all different coaches, reminding me that I need to continue to grow my game. And so now being here back on the East Coast, I'm settling in really nicely here and have been enjoying my time on and off the field. So we are at the dog park. Every day after practice, we usually take a stroll up here. It's only about a half a mile from our apartment. And Nash loves to run around with his friends and get some energy out. Nash, come here, come to mommy. Sit. So this is Nash. He's a year and a half and he is a golden retriever. Ready? Go get it. It's a good day when he actually brings the ball back. Um, he doesn't often do that. Nash is literally always smiling. And for the most part, I'm pretty smiley, but again, after maybe a bad game or a loss, like I am not in a good mood. Any like tough loss, I'll come back to the apartment. She'll be back from the game already. And her and Nash will just be cuddling in the bed. And I'm like, all right, I'll just stay away. It's nice to know that's like a, almost like a, a therapy dog for you sometimes when you need it. You gonna smile, Nash? There you go. Yeah, that's a good smile. When I need to unwind after practice or after games, I like to, you know, go by the pool, play some spike ball with my fiance. We're two super competitive people, and so it's so much fun, like, doing backyard games. It gets very intense, but it is a lot of fun. I'm not, by the way, I'm not moving a lot, so. You see this? She don't want it. She don't want it today. I'm not tying my shoes. I'm not putting my hair up. Come on. This is just for them to see, oh, they play spike ball, yay! <laughs> Chris is a professional track and field athlete. He throws javelin for Team USA, and he is also a hopeful Olympic athlete. Woo. He's gonna try and make himself look good on camera, so just gonna throw that out there. AKA why he has his tank look, on. Look, now she's talking smack right now. <laughs> I'm gonna play spike ball and wear my tank top. Show off <laughs> I was my muscles. I'm wearing a tank anyway. 
Oh, nice shot. I know. <laughs> For me, it is hard to switch off. Like, I am such a competitor, I hate losing. When I was growing up, if I got a second place medal, that was going right in the trash. I hated losing more than anything in the world, and I still hate to lose now. Um, she uh, hated to lose. Yeah. Like, playing a game with her, even a board game, any type of backyard game, like, she wanted to win. She was always very competitive. I, I would say over the last couple of years, there's a seriousness and there's a focus about everything she does. She's methodical and she's driven. And, I, and you know, she has a goal, like all of our goalkeepers do, to be the best goalkeeper in the world. The first step to achieving that is to playing games for this team. And she's on that path. Being on the women's national team has always been my goal and always been a dream of mine. And my first cap in Sydney was dream come true. I found out I was playing the, the match day minus one practice and the goalkeeper coach came over to me, let me know that I would be starting the next day. I'd love to say that I told her she was starting and she was screaming and jumping all up, but she wasn't. She was Casey, just nodded her head, said, yeah, that's great, thank you. So I called my parents immediately. I was like, mom, dad, I'm starting tomorrow, set your alarms. And they're like, we're like, why aren't we, why aren't, aren't we there? there? And she put on a great performance. If you saw her play that game and the happiness and how she controlled everything and the smile on her face, like I don't like it was great as a goalkeeper because I got a lot of action. I you know had to come for a lot of crosses, had to make a lot of saves, and for me it was like a perfect first cap. Ran under pressure, take it away. Here's Kerr firing, tipped it over the bar. Spectacular. Those are the fun ones, especially when you're six one. You know, honestly, it's so well deserved in our opinion because <laughs> we know, we know what she's put into this. Normal girls want to go to dances and proms. Casey, <laughs> soccer always came first. She prioritized her love and her passion for the game. My dream since I was little is to play in World Cups and Olympics and win gold medals and play in multiple World Cups, play in multiple Olympics, win multiple gold medals. We know and believe in her heart and, and with everything she's putting into it, that she's going to, she's going to get to that, and we just want to be a part of it. That's all. You know, seeing my parents in the stands, it's even more special now that I am a pro. And my parents gave up a lot so I could be a soccer player. So they've been a big piece in this whole journey for me. As I evolved from youth to being a professional, that inner circle of mine just became tighter and tighter and relying on those people, like my fiance, my family, they became such a big piece in getting to that next level. I remember going to games and asking the keepers for their gloves, and now that's me. A little girl looking up to Casey Murphy, I would say you picked a good role model. If they want to be like Casey Murphy, their parents should be very proud, because she's a great kid.